One of the biggest hurdles in you and I understanding Scripture is the idea of community versus the idea of the individual. More on this in a moment. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Tour, day number five of Bahar B'chukhatai. Let's go again into chapter number 26 and read verses 3 and 4. The word says, If you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall give you rain in its season, and the land shall yield its crops, and the trees of the field yield their fruit. What's interesting about these two verses is the word you. Here, it's not speaking to an individual. That is, if an individual will walk in obedience to the commands, then that individual's particular property within its particular bounds and boundaries will receive rain in its proper season. That would suggest that if two neighbors were being compared, one obedient, one disobedient, then the rain would only fall within the boundaries of the obedient man's property, while his neighbor would suffer lack. That's not what the word is actually saying, because the word you here is plural. What is being said then is that Yah is speaking to the nation of Israel as a whole, not to an individual. Well, what does that mean? The idea he's expressing is if Am Israel as a people, as a nation, will walk in obedience to his Torah, then the whole nation will receive the blessings of obedience. Wow, that's a tall order. So the rewards and favors are national on a community level, not on an individual level. The agricultural increase, the political stability, the regional security, and military success is not dependent upon just the king or the priesthood or any other form of leadership, but upon all the people as a whole. So what is required then is that we walk together in community as a nation seeking to walk obediently together as opposed to, well, I'm keeping my nose clean and I'm trying to do, do what is right. What's the matter with you? Wrong attitude. What is required then is as a people that Israel decide that they are going to walk in his commands, that we are going to help keep each other focused and attentive as to what is required of us. Herein then re, re, would lie the skill of proper reproof and rebuke of our brother, our sister, our neighbor, when they're walking contrary to the word of Elohim. It's not for us to show up, point a long, gnarly finger in their face, and start accusing. Rather, the idea is to encourage with a positive affirmation those that are walking contrary to the word of Elohim. The body of Messiah, as is expressed in the Hebrew roots community, has long failed in this aspect. We have been very apt to point our fingers, to slander, to malign, to accuse, to separate ourselves over those things that we see differently. In this, then, we are withholding the favor and the blessing of Yah upon us as a community. Why is it that for all of our Torah obedience, keeping of feast days, for all of our Shabbats that we have observed, for all of the things that we have observed in his commands and then sought to accomplish, to do, to preserve, to guard, and to protect, we're not experiencing the power and the anointing of the Ruach of Kodesh to stand out as a people of significance and strategic placement in the earth. It's because we malign and accuse. For all of our obedience, we're disobeying. Let me say that again. For all of our supposed obedience, we're still walking in disobedience. And as a whole, 
then we are suffering the lack of favor and benefit because of our disobedience. It is up to you and I then to learn to forgive, not to overlook, to forgive, to pardon, to love anyway, to reach out to those that we would disagree over some doctrine or issue or application or observance and say, I love you anyway. I want to walk with you. You see it this way. I see it another way, but we are part of the whole together. Not everyone is going to 100% agree. Spouses don't 100% agree. If we're real with ourselves, we don't often agree with ourselves. We argue within our own mind and our own understanding. We need to provide then some space for others to disagree with us and yet experience our love. So contrary to standard pulpit doctrine, the blessings are not to the individual, but to the community. It's not about whether you're blessed and favored or not. If I seem to have the symptoms, the evidence of being blessed and favored, but my neighbor, my, my brother, my sister is yet lacking or in need or not experiencing uh, solid health, then neither am I. I'm not blessed and favored. You're not increased and acknowledged by the Most High with, with strength and ability until we all are. The goal is not the individual, but for the community. Same thing speaks towards judgment. It's not an individual that is judged. It's the group. It's the nation. Consider this. Abraham interceded for the cities of the plain. Yah had visited him and gave him the promise of his coming heir, Yitzhak, or Isaac. Then at the same time, he announces, I've come to judge the cities of the plain. Avraham began to pray. Lot, his nephew, is in there. Yah gives a, a, a pardon if ten tzedekim, or ten righteous men, are found within the cities. They were not. There was only one. There was Lot. But consider this, if Lot and his family had not left at the messenger's urging, then they would have died right alongside everyone else within the cities of the plain. If the community is walking worthy of judgment and we remain within that community, then we will suffer the same judgment as everyone else because it's not about the individual, it is about the whole. When it comes to our nation, we can say, well, America is founded upon Judeo-Christian concepts. And we can sit back and say, well, we were founded correctly. And therefore, because of our correct foundation, the Father will choose to bless us. Not if we don't walk righteously. We can be founded correctly or incorrectly. It's about our current walk. And it's not about the individual. Well, I'm born again, so therefore when judgment comes, he will spare me. It's about the nation. America as a nation has turned its heart in large part away from her father, from her creator, from the one who gave us birth. We have walked contrary to his word. Abortion blood fills the soil of our land. Violence and racism fills our streets and communities. Political divide is destroying us. Greed consumes us. Rejection of Yahweh and his word has polluted our minds and our hearts. It's time for us to cry out to Yah that he spare us as a nation and that we walk righteously before him to influence anyone and everyone that we can. Otherwise, judgment will come upon this land, and we're worthy. And when it does, the righteous may very well suffer right along the unrighteous. My friend, we got a lot of praying to do. We got a lot of crying out to do. And beyond that, we are attached to the, uh, to the people of Israel. I'm Israel. Scatter the world over. We need to intercede. We've got work to do. Shabbat Shalom.
We look forward to seeing you again next week. And until then, shalom. 